Yeah, welcome back everybody uh, to our Revit uh, 2016 series. Okay, um, I'm going to make this the final um, video for this particular project, Project B. Um, okay, and th this video will be um, basically setting up some paper space and um, viewports, etc. So to get ready for printing. Okay, so it's sort of the final step of you know putting together the whole package. Okay, so um, we've got our pages here. So we've got a ground floor plan. We've got a first floor plan. Um, what else? We've got some elevations. We've got some callouts. Uh, uh, there's a section there. There's a section call out there. Okay, so. Um, Quite a, you know, got a range of things that we can do there. Okay, the big thing is that these are all at one to twenty, you know, different scales. Okay, so it's going to be nice to try and put as many of these onto one page and see what happens. Okay, so in my project browser, okay, in there are my sheets, and then I've got a one o two unnamed. I'm just going to double click on that, and. There it is. Okay, so this is an A3 sheet. Okay, so it should be big enough for what we need. Okay, right, so the process of setting up a sheet is quite simple. Okay, step number one is get your sheet onto, this, onto the screen. Um, step number two is literally just clicking, dragging on the information that you need. Okay, so let's start for with us of um, logic would say let's create the first floor plan. So what I'm doing there is I'm holding my left mouse button down. Okay, and as soon as I go into my viewing space, I can let go of the left mouse button. So I'm no longer holding on to it. But as you can see, um, you know, either side of the screen, the blue lines there that something has grabbed on and that's the floor plan. Now what I can do is I can roughly position it and then I can go left click to drop it into place. Just like that. Okay. So and there we go. Look I mean for for all intents and purposes, you know, I can use my arrow keys to nudge everything around. Okay, so for all intents and purposes that's basically ready to go. Okay. So what I might do is I might get another sheet and we'll do some other stuff on that. So so there we go. So there's our first floor. There's our ground floor plan. Okay. But you will see here, okay, um, that the name is down here and we've got elevation markers to one side. Now we haven't really set up any of that sort of stuff yet. We're gonna do that in another in another series. Okay. Now how do I get in there to manipulate some of the stuff because it's off screen and I want to sort of fix it up okay what you do is you basically you find that viewport and you'll see that black line occurring or the black outline and you just left double click so double click okay now we are in the model space okay Revit doesn't call it model space but if you are an AutoCAD user Okay, this it's the easiest way to describe the um, the place where we are. Okay, so this is model space. If I right click and go deactivate the view, we're effectively in paper space. So double click in. I can right click out, or I can double click out as well. So a couple of different ways. So, but anyway, let's go into this viewport. So double click. Okay, what can I do here? Okay, All right. For the time being, I don't want to have to. Actually, yes, I will. I will. No, I won't. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of these viewports. Okay, um, these elevation markers. We'll worry about. We can worry about them another day. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select one of them. Okay, I'm going to right click. I'm going to go hide and view, and I'm going to go hide category. Okay, and this will hide all elevation markers in this view. Okay, now the shortcut key for that is VH. But if I just do this, left click, gone. 
Okay. Now the other thing I need to do here is down here in my view controls. Okay, this little button here that says show the crop region. So if I left click on that, it now shows me where the extents of the viewport are. Okay, and when I click on the viewport, okay, I get these little round circles which are the grips. Okay, and now I can just drag them in like that. Okay, so that is the model, you know, the viewport is for the model. However, it will let us, Revit will show annotation elements outside of the viewport. So if I drag that down, okay, see, I can still see my dimensions, but if I drag it down a little bit further, my model starts to disappear. Okay, so that is because there are two viewports, okay, one that we can see and one that we can't straight away. So if I come down here, Okay, let's have a look around. Da, 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 da. Somewhere around here. Nope. If I say right click, if in doubt, right click. Nope. Jeez, I was only mucking around with this the other day. Ah, view. Viewports. Like I said, we do sometimes forget. So we'll tie her on that for a second. My apologies. Um, we're not going to um, dwell on this. Okay, but yeah, just go show. I'm I'm not perfect, and there will be times when I'm, I will make a mistake. I'm quite happy to do that. I get to learn. Okay, so I just double click out of that. Okay, I can now nudge my viewport out a little bit. So I might go back in there. I'm going to hide this category, which are all the um, reference planes. So V H. Okay, that's made my life a little bit easier. Okay, so I can go into my sheet now. I can go. I can name that. I can go ground floor plan. And you know, I can issue a project number, which will be the same across all sheets. Um, there's an issue date. There's the author, there's a checker, you know, it might be X, Y, Z, you never know. Okay, and I can also change my sheet number. So, A100 or whatever the convention is that you use in your office or your business. Okay, so that's that one there. So, the last one is, is just basically moving this little piece around. Okay, so... To move this independently, I have to make sure that the viewport isn't on. So I just go basically make sure nothing's active. Now what I can do is I can left click that. And then I can use just my drag tool. So left click and drag using my move. And I can get move it to where I need it to be. Now, this line here. Okay, so if I click on that. Okay, there's a couple of options here but with the defaults. So at the moment I've got the viewport and it says title with line. I could go title with no line. But if you're like me and you actually do like the line, I, th I think it's a little bit nicer. I want the title with line. How do I change that? There. So if I click on the title itself, nothing happens. But if I click on the viewport, I get a grip, which means I can drag that line in and change it. So not very intuitive, um, but yes. So if you want to change that line, the moral of the story is is click on the viewport and then you can change it. Okay. Now we'll just go quickly. We're going to go right click into our viewport. So viewport, right click on our sheets, new sheet, another A3 metric sheet there. We'll go OK. Okay. Now we're going to go drag on a couple more. Plans. So now what I might do is I might drag, just for argument's sake, I'm going to grab um, section 2, which is quite substantial. Okay, so I've double clicked in there, I'm just going to do some very, very, very quick modifications. Okay, because I just want to sort of hide that from view, because it's in the way right now. Actually, like that. Drag all my elevation, my level markers over a little bit. Okay. Move my 
my section label over there click on the viewport drag my whoa, wrong one click on the viewport and drag that across okay so there's a section up now what I can do, see so you see that this section is 1 to 50 okay now I can go to my section 2 call out I can drag that on okay and I'm just going to squeeze that in there okay so again a couple of little things here get rid of it move that line okay there might be some nudging you know you might have to squeeze things up you can go back and forth into the various um, screens and viewports so that we can get everything in place and this is our skill as you know one of the skills that we must have as a as a designer or a technician um, is okay yes we can draw each individual viewport getting them onto the page so they make a logical sense and everything works is another skill that um, we can have okay but there we go so basically what this shows is that I can have a viewport here with a scale of 1 to 50, viewport here with a scale of 1 to 20, okay, and things like text and stuff all behave themselves. Oh, here's the other thing. Here is the call, so this is the section, here is the call out of the section. This information here now is self-populated. So the top number here says number 2, so it's, it's view number 2, page 1.01 I think. Okay, so it's a self-referencing system. Um, Revit do have some variations on the theme. You can use different call-outs, etc. Um, but I think the default one's re quite reasonable, certainly as a starting point. Okay, so again, you guys can um, have a look around, have a muck around with all this sort of stuff. From this page, like I said, I'm going to call it quits on this particular um, project. We've been going for a long time on it, and I think it'd be nice to sort of um, say goodbye to it. Um, by all means, yeah, so, um, if you see the video, subscribe to the channel. The more I get, the um, better it is. Um, and um, I will be uh, looking at uh, my next project very, very soon. Um, I might jump back to a third, a, a single story house. Um, and really going to start looking at how, with regards to Australian architecture, and uh, probably New Zealand as well to a degree. Um, how do we um, get certain things done? Okay, so um, let's go start looking at some of the elements um, that are you, you know, I won't say 100% unique to our country, but certainly um, provide us with you know a few little quirks and things for us to reuse with Revit. Okay, so I'll see you later. Thank you very much for watching the series um, again subscribe if you have comments let me know and uh, we'll go from there but we'll see you later